what can I say? Like today, you can see even more uh, all this uh, the split that we have in our beings, you know. And the, the, of course, for me, what I see is the lack of uh, education, you know. Mm. So if, I mean, you see nowadays it's like living from a crisis to another, and from a trauma to another, and uh, just blaming governments and other people. Yes, it is true. The block, the barrier. They are outside, but they are inside as well. And we can we can truly really look at this crisis, which is again more and more clear nowadays, as an opportunity of transformation. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Disco Shaman TV. Today we got a very special guest, Venice Valentina Onshaw. Uh, she has a MD qualification. She's a specialist in family medicine, Ayurveda, and aromatherapy, acupuncture, and Chinese medicine. She has over 20 years of practice in all these mentioned fields, and she's also an author, a permanent faculty of QAV, yoga and meditation teacher. Welcome to the show, Valentina. How are you? Thank you. I'm very happy to be with you. I'm doing great. Thank you. It's a pleasure to have you. Would you like to introduce yourself? All right. You, you have said it. And again, if people want to know more about what I'm doing, they can always just go to the website, amitkosami.org. That's the main uh, point right now for me. Uh, the collaboration with the quantum scientist, Amit Goswami. And uh, that was a wonderful moment when we met and uh, many things that I was studying and practicing for many years, they got much more sense, you know, so bringing quantum science, which is the bridge between science and spirituality, as you know, made uh, a lot and created revelations inside of me and it's still bringing the fruits. <laughs> okay, so we will go into question one. So you're seeing a lot of sickness in the world at the moment, cancer, depression, suicide, mental illnesses, physical illnesses. As a quantum practitioner, what's your take on what's happening with all these ailments? Yeah, I mean, uh, what can I say? Like today, you can see even more uh, all this, uh, the split that we have in our beings, you know, and the, the, of course, for me, what I see is the lack of uh, education, you know. Mm. So, if, I mean, you see nowadays it's like living from a crisis to another, and from a trauma to another, and uh, just blaming governments and other people. Yes, it is true. The block, the barrier. They are outside, but they are inside as well. And we can we can truly really look at this crisis, which is again more and more clear nowadays as an opportunity of transformation. And when I say crisis, you can put here also diseases and all kinds of sufferances and neurosis, which you can see it a lot and more you know, than in the past. And uh, what this is bringing up, we have to look what's bringing in ourselves and eventually really take this as a chance to become more authentic. Mm -hmm. I would say, you know, because again, we should use, like if you look uh, at uh, disease or sufferance, um, so from the point of view that you're looking, it uh, gets different meanings, you know? So if you, for example, you have a health situation, you know, and you want to just get rid of that problem, that's not gonna help so much. You will just take a pill because you want a quick fix as usually, and you don't want to take a look at the message of that, what created, first of all, what resonances you are maintaining maybe for years, and uh, it may be even generations, you know? And then take a look at those, and truly um, give meaning to your life using those things, knowing yourself, knowing what, what took you there in the first place. Because actually this body, all these bodies that we have, uh, it's a great wisdom in that, you know, we just need to get back in touch with that, get back also uh, with, the, with the wisdom of earth that we are here, not by coincidence and not by coincidence right now. We, of course, it takes courage to change this attitude of, uh, again, a fifth quick fix uh, versus truly looking with courage and starting from wherever we are to transform with the help of whatever is there for us. You know, it's, it's a part of alchemy that I see. 
Mm. When I was researching plant medicines and indigenous communities in the Amazon basin, I was working with one of the shamans over there and what he was telling me was that, for example, people with certain sicknesses, what's actually going on at an energetical level is that somewhere they have lost their power. It's been taken away from them. And the role of the shaman was to go into the ceremony space and into a trance and to be able to hunt the life or the experience in which you had lost your power. They call it hunting the demon. And they actually see it as a energetical demon that has taken your power from that point of when that trauma occurred. And their job is to remove it from there. Does that have anything to do with the current practices you work with? Yeah, definitely. And I also had uh, this experience that you're talking about, you know, in a few ways, because uh, interesting enough, I mean, nah, like everybody, I guess, uh, wherever there are uh, big blockages and big uh, again situations that you really have to deal with you know and use what is called fundamental creativity because in creativity when you say creativity also in creativity in healing it's situational when you just have to call uh, to heal uh, from a cold or from something you know not so difficult or can be fundamental when you speak of cancer or other health situations which are really serious and then you get the question do you really want to leave or not you know and I've been there I had uh, my own uh, you can call it however you want to go dark night of the soul if you want which has lasted for uh, maybe 10 years of uh, a lot of intense sufferance you know eventually leading me to to work with also healing the inner child healing all kind of things that were put under the carpet but together with that my immunity was very much down mm -hmm. and I had uh, Lyme disease if you know what's that and it was really, really severe. And from that moment, things started to really change because it's interesting how we create, like if we, even, even if uh, you grow um, surrounded by healthy systems, still there may be some things inside of you that, uh, I mean, you have to really find your own voice there. It's, it's not enough to just take what other people are saying, you know? So eventually you have to really do this uh, hero journey yourself. And uh, yeah, so you speak about uh, the shamans, they can be, again, uh, some shamans which are amazing, some who are not so, you know, they just don't deserve the name of shaman. Of course, the intent has to be there. The person who is helping you has to be really transformed, you know? And then again, yeah, you will have to face those things eventually, even, even when you work with something uh, that seems simple, but it's not like forgiveness, you know? you know? And then, so you work with that. And eventually, like if it's a traumatic situation, you know that you're healed from that. When you look back and you don't have any more that feeling of contraction, you know? So when you, even now, if you have any situation, you're thinking of that and you're contracting immediately, it can be even a karmic uh, situation that is like, or you want to say this uh, demons that are there. And if it's contracting you, it means you still have something to do with that. But yeah, what you say, it's people eventually lose the contact with their soul i would say also you know and then you just put covers and more masks and just you're disconnecting from yourself more and more yeah. and many people are like that like walking blind in this way and eventually then this is coming to shake us up you know and come come back to life you know but then yeah it's it's up to us if we can do it in this life or not because you know consciousness universe is intelligent and we have chances over chances but eventually it's up to us. We are so many re repetent, you know, we are repeating over and over the same things and uh, learning uh, not so easy, you know. We are not learning usually from uh, happy moments. Unfortunately, we learn from sufferance, what I noticed, you know. Have you had any bad experience with shamans? Uh, not personally, but I know other people who did, you know, and I... Yeah, because I didn't look for them, kind of like I'm, I'm, I'm open to see what's coming in my way, you know. And uh, I, I met a wonderful uh, shaman, you know. But it's, it's uh, again, you have to. It's tricky. You have to really be attentive. <laughs> and uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I guess you really gotta be able to sniff out. Mm -hmm. Is this person here for my healing? Or their own personal gain because yeah, yeah their own power i've noticed that even in that world of, of spiritual evolution there, there are these there are these um these dark forces you could call 
You're going to be shaman. You, you know, I think there's nothing. The people nothing. who want to take your energy, they don't want you to, 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 to grow and prosper and they want to pull legs. Yeah, and not just that. They want to become themselves. They empower their ego, you know. Yeah. And then it's uh, even in the spiritual way, I've met people really developed, you know, who had all kinds of states, you know, of consciousness, you know. So you may even have some other states, but eventually you may not really be transformed. That's so interesting to notice that, you know. And uh, it's a journey, you know, it's not ending. That's the thing. It's transformation, something continuous. And then again, what you can encounter, especially if we, how you call it in the spiritual world, is something which is called the spiritual ego, which may be the most dangerous of these egos. You know, you can even, I mean, you if you have that and you are in this power game, uh, it's you're putting in danger all that you have learned, you know, unless you again get in contact constantly with your soul with your heart and uh, practice a lot of humbleness the more you have power in uh, in anything in awakening of energies you know, probably kundalini experiences whatever you may have and also when you are helping others with their health so it's very tricky to see when uh, you react out of love and when you react out of your ego you know so. do, you, do you feel that every person who's walking down the spiritual path is prone to facing a spiritual ego and it's just sort of like a process of you being able to come out of that on the other end but there's certain people that actually don't come out and they get trapped in that whole facade of it and create yeah. space yeah, yeah, yeah because again like uh, i mean uh, especially depends which kind of what spiritual path you have you know because there are many and again all of them they can take you to the same truth if they are uh, genuine you know but on this path eventually again you will awaken what is called for example manipura chakra the navel area yeah. which is fundamental to awaken because you have to awaken your personality you have to develop eventually that authenticity that starts from there but again it's up to when you speak about you have to uh, understand and experience the reality of the chakras you know uh, the main chakras especially which are seven chakras is spoken in all the traditions you find reference to these ones and uh, again you in hara for example in karate yeah but again when when that chakra is developing together with that that's the place where the ego resides if you want and uh, in quantum spirituality we don't speak about uh, killing the ego instead of uh, using that because uh, if you really want to be authentic you cannot do it without that you know so the whole idea in quantum spirituality is to shift from the traditional practice or that you encounter usually in spiritual tradition, especially in uh, ancient yoga, tantra, and uh, all of these traditions that can really take you far, but that's too much emphasis on, on the self archetype, on that uh, you go in the cave and you just go for the ultimate realization, but it's not really like that, you know, but the idea is not to get out of the world. I mean, that's how I see it also now now not to get out of the world and of the ego and instead kind of focus on embodying these archetypes the highest the noblest values that exist why we are here on this mm -hmm. earth you know so and then uh, we speak about dharma you know your personal dharma you are here with your own qualities and the idea is to learn to to hear this the meaning of your own life the meaning of your dharma the call of that and to learn to take these quantum leaps eventually make a shift of your character and develop authenticity uh and of course integrating all these dichotomies universal archetypal dichotomies you know there are tons a few dichotomies the major ones and then in this way what happens is that we develop a strong healthy authentic uh, ego also which is encouraged but not the uh, egotistic uh, ego you know so uh, in this way the negative emotion brain circuits that exist we all have them you know they don't go away but this kind of ego you know will never use them for um, your own benefit you know uh, for example you will not uh, manipulate others you know you will not display tantrums or enforce because that's what's happening even in spiritual schools it's all kind of manipulation there and you don't see it you you know it's hide it in various ways and then uh, it's well, negative emotion circuits they are used for the ego's purpose you know and an authentic ego will not do that and then next thing is that transformation has to be done in stages 
you know, and there is a reward system. We have to see that and, and understand that we have to keep that, you know, so the brain is reacting with rewards or punishment system, you know. So uh, we also speak of developing the state of happiness, increasing happiness, which satisfies also this reward brain circuits. Otherwise, you cannot. It's like a dance, you know. And the world obviously needs transformed people, you know, if not, you see what's happening today. It's out of weak people. Well, I love how you said that, you know, not to, to, to kill the ego. Our society is so uh, enmeshed into this idea that we need to kill everything, you know what I mean? That's not working for us. It's more or less shifting it and having a different perception of it. And coming back to the chakras, how would you explain chakras to, you know, 20 year old, um jim who's out in the clubs he's pumping fists he's listening to drum and bass and he comes on has a big pizza kebab goes to sleep wakes up works and he's just living in the matrix how would you explain chakras to him because for him it just sounds like he heard something on naruto and it's fantasy how would you explain to him and how would it benefit him by knowing this knowledge yeah so uh again when you say chakras you know it's the translation is wheels wheels of life whatever you don't need to uh i mean it's not uh, necessary to uh, really see them in this way you know the idea is that uh, you have to see how they connect with life you know for example uh the base chakra and muratara chakra so people who have a uh, Muratara chakra, they have usually a very harmonious body, beautiful and strong and also flexible. And uh, when people who have who are into sport, who loves nature, you know, they have a beautiful Manipurata, Muratara chakra, you know, but the, the test would be if you are very obsessed with the physical body, you know, how you look. And uh, the idea is to also open towards the energetical aspects, you know, to give also attention to the emotional and mental aspects also. So Hatha Yoga, for example, you know, practices that go also into the energetic aspect, not just uh, into running, running. Eventually, you know, you, you see that there's a, uh, it's a limit there, you know, so you don't go further than that kind of. And also people who are uh, on this level, uh, I mean, there are uh, there are also blockages on all of them, all the levels. Um, it's if it's uh, if the energies there are uh, uh, blocked or anyway not moving much, it's a state of laziness, more tamas, if you know. And uh, you you also have you're too attached usually on things. You don't allow change mm -hmm. much, you know. Uh, so let's say Muladhara Chakra. It's also obviously. Uh, you are thinking only of survival, so survival oriented. And actually, like I'm just telling you two, a few words for each of the levels to see. Um, but the idea is that uh, uh, people nowadays, the level of consciousness is more at the level of Mulatra and Svadhisthana chakra, so the first two chakras. And that's why people, you see, it's always about money, about uh, having enough food, having uh, only your shelter, only that, imagine. And uh, the people at the level of Svadhisthana chakra, it's about sexuality, you know, and how many people nowadays really understand sexuality. It's so easy to put the image of anybody down, you know, in this way, because and to manipulate them. So at these two level, people are very easily manipulated, you know, because, you know, again, it's they are easily threatened. So, yeah, you understand? So you, I know you know, know these things. I'm just trying to make it easily understandable and then Svadhisthana so the second level uh uh now I'm again so it's a lot to describe about them and I'm passionate about but just I'm trying to see uh, common words too you know so Svadhisthana chakra is about um, uh, a great uh, erotic sensuality you know this kind of sexual energy and uh, it's all about pleasure you know, so the test is that you are stuck in pleasure. You refuse any kind of discipline. You third. just remain at the surface of things. Sorry. That's the third chakra, is it? No, the second. Exactly. The second. So the first, it's about, again, only survival, mainly survival, but still you're, you're preoccupied with the physical body. And at the second level, you're pre preoccupied with the sexual energy and everything that generates pleasure. You know, so the test is about being stuck in pleasure and about refusing discipline, you know, so uh, staying at the surface of things, you know, without in going deep because you may suffer. Right. So, again, of course, the, control, the solution here would be to learn to control this erotic energy, which is not bad, 
but to learn to control it eventually to sublimate it to a higher level and also to learn some discipline, you know, because nowadays, even with the kids, what's happening, you know, people, for their parents are just letting them be, you know, but not but because they don't know what to do with them. So that's a problem. Yeah. And the third level, Manipura Chakra is called the level of the, you know, what, what is called Hara in the, in the karate, yeah, for example. So it's uh, here already when a person has developed this chakra, you see that person, you know, it jumps in your eyes. You know, it's a, it's a very strong uh, inner power, decision, uh, courage, and self-confidence, self-respect, you know. Uh, you see, for example, a way to, to improve this level would be to learn abdominal breathing and to also keep your attention there when you do that. So here, because again, you get in touch with power and the test of power, I see it as the, the most difficult test to pass, really. Uh, and uh, how to pass that or it would be, of course, by becoming humble to overcome this ego and to understand that you're not the center of the universe. And it's not easy when you start getting in touch with this kind of power, you know. Uh, but again, people who are extremely courageous in some directions, but they step back, you know, people at the level of Anipura Chakra, but they may step still back in front of situation that would bring them fundamental lessons because they feel they would lose the control. So people who are afraid of losing the control, it's a bit stuck at this level, yeah? Or losing the image of power, yeah? So uh, also being uh, taken care so much to, to have this perfect image, but still uh, uh, staying away from true transformation. And of course the solution for these people, which are is still a very good step, but they are stuck there, is to open their heart more, you know, to cultivate love, empathy, compassion, humbleness, to even protect others, to empower others eventually, you know? All right, so the, yeah, so this hope you to give ideas, you know? And then to accept the new also. Okay. Because again, it's that you want to be in control. That's the thing, Manipura Chakra. It's fascinating. All of the chakras are fascinating. They are like worlds of manifestation, you know? They're like dimensions and realities in there. Yeah. What, and how, uh, how yeah. To understand it is like, so what the chakras are, are the yeah. chakras fundamental? Wait, wait, let, me, let, me, let me go to the others yeah, okay. so that you, one point. So the Anahata Chakra, the heart chakra, of course, it's empathy, self-giving, forgiveness, love, you know, but love is not that, that uh, you know, you go to the market and if you don't love me, I don't love you. It's not that love, you know, taking care of others, of course, but also having the self-love, you know, so you cannot really love others unless you love yourself. So, uh, but still the test here, if you want, it's a, it's a great uh, soul sensitivity. You're too sensitive and this can generate states of sadness or despair or, you know, so the key here would be to practice forgiveness. You know, that's just briefly now. To, yeah. And then Vishuddha Chakra, the fifth chakra, at the level of the throat, it's about, uh, you know, innocence, purity, in, intuitiveness, but that comes already from this level, and creativity again, you know. And uh, if you want, that, so people who are very pure, very creative, genius people, and artists especially, you know, I would say. So, but the problem with these people, which have this chakra more developed, is that you step back in front of whatever you think it's impure or uh, low frequency. You don't want to melt, to, to merge, to, to have any kind of relation with this kind of people. Yeah, of course, that's a tendency. And you have the tendency to also withdraw from the world. And the, the, what you need to do at this level is to learn transfiguration, what is called, to be able to see sacred in the mundane, to see sacred in everything. And uh, it's possible. And then at the level of Ajna Chakra, it's uh, people who live, uh, of course, in the world of ideas, uh, even fascinated with the mind, with their mind, and losing the connection with the rest of the world. You know? So again, the, the idea would be to learn to awaken their soul, compassion, love in other ways. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So it's the test is that I'm already perfect, you know, and you don't want to be, you're too intelligent to melt with the world, you know? So just, yeah, to give some keys. Yeah, cool. Uh, very nicely explained. How I see it is, um, like each chakra is a, a physical has its physical location on the body, and you can find that with the concentration of nerves and ganglias, and that's where the most energy passes. And each area has a specific uh, point of development in your upbringing. So for the base chakra, it's your more of your survival centers. Second one, it's your um, emotional identity, and then the third is your 
egotistical identity. And then the fourth is your social identity, um, your self-expression, and then it goes higher and higher. So what's one of the, what, what confuses me though is, are these actual worlds in each chakra? Like for example, I'm in, a, in my base chakra, okay? And I have lost connection with my ability to survive. Something happened to me as a child that was traumatic. And now that chakra is shut off. Will that chakra pretty much now, that energetical center, create my whole life as a reflection of what had happened to me in my childhood? Like it's, okay. like, it's like a projector, like project onto the, the, the consciousness of the universe of what I'm feeling inside. So it's like a mirror. Everything's reflecting mm -hmm. the people, the places, the circumstances, the events is all a reflection of my um, certain chakras that have blockages or they're flowing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, obviously, like we are, again, we are really a whole universe there. And the problem is that we don't know ourselves. That's again, that's the problem. We don't know ourselves. And uh, even when we see things, we are just not looking at them, you know? So we are, again, lack of education, truly nothing. It's always coming to that. But, uh, and then still there are some points, some, some of these chakras are more important than others, yeah? And then we speak um, about uh, chakras that have a self, you know? So uh, memory, making capacity and perception as well. And this would be at the level of Manipura chakra and Hatha chakra. And here it's proven in science already. But again, chakras now, if you want the scientific definition, it's chakras are those places where consciousness simultaneously actualizes the vital and the physical in the process of which the software program some random function, yeah? And then organ functions take place and the uh, correlated liturgical fields move. You heard about morphogenetical fields, I hope everybody. And you feel that movement in the form of vital energy, you know? So again, all these chakras, all of them, they have a vital function. They have a corresponding physical organs and associated feelings. I only went on the feelings more so that people can recognize this easily. But again, uh, vital energies, this is important, actualize at the level of the navel. So, you know, so it's important to have the first two levels, Muladhara Chakra and Svadhisthana, pure and functional so they can collapse, if you want, at the level of the navel. And otherwise, you cannot speak of harmon harmonious uh, Manipura Chakra. So if you're lacking your, again, as you said, so if you had uh, all kind of uh, traumatic events and intense fears, you know, when you're running your life based on fear, that's of course the energy doesn't have much chance to collapse at the first level where it needs to collapse at the level of Manipura Chakra, at the navel, Hara, yeah? Then at the heart and at brow, these are the first places where we describe selves. And again, the energies at the other chakras, uh, usually remain unconscious. So that's why it's uh, with working with the uh, Mulatara Chakra and Svadhisthana Chakra, it's a lot of unconscious stuff there, you know? Or they can uh, collapse, again, this, these levels, uh, also the level of Vishla Chakra. It's, it's a connection with Anahata Chakra. And so these energies uh, collapse, they have the chance to collapse in conjunction with one of these three chakras with the self, you know? And uh, again, it's a lot to understand about this and to, to know when we say energy goes in a chakra, we mean that energy at that chakra collapses, you know? And when you say energy goes out, out, we mean the chakra is not getting attention, you know, it's not being collapsed, you know? So again, root chakra, Molatara chakra, so it's the base of the spine. So again, it's not a point, you know, it's, it's, it's not just a point there, you know? And yeah. the vital function here is, yeah, it's elimination. You see when, uh, when dogs or I don't know, animals, you see them in great fear or panic, you know, they are losing feces, yeah? Mm. Uh, so elimination mm -hmm. and also they are losing feces and pee, you know? So these two chakras immediately, the energy goes out, yeah? And the same with us, if we, again, if we, and there are exercises in yoga and tantra, for example, just simply learning to do what is called Ashvini Mudra, the gesture of the horse, you know, the, what the, how a horse is defecating, you know, it's contraction and relaxation. So, uh, for example, if you just do this exercise, you, when you're tired, being very tired, you don't have vital enough. Obviously, it's a problem there at the root chakra. And just this contraction, 
and hold it as much as you can. You, eventually you can visualize the energy going up along the spine, but if not even doing that for five minutes on and off, you will see your vitality will, uh, will boost, you know? So again, this elimination is a crucial component of maintenance of the body, which is called catabolism, you know? And uh, there, again, there are organs expressing the, this function, you know, large intestine, rectum, anus, but also the bladder, you know, and uh, important, uh, the adrenal gland, so root chakra and sex chakra, you know? And again, this feeling of being rooted is also important and grounded. You know, not just survival oriented uh, competitiveness when energy moves in and, and, and fear when the energy moves out, you know. So again, when we, by evolution, you know, the control of this chakra, of the root chakra is taken over by the brain amygdala, which gives the fear, flight or courage, fight. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's why. Yeah, so it's a connection which is proven already. So that's why you see that this flight or fight response, if uh, Muladhara chakra is weak, you're all the time into that, you know? And then sex chakra, chakra, of course, the vital body function is reproduction and all these organs, uterus, ovaries, prostate, testes, etc. you know? And uh, uh, the feeling, of course, I spoke about, yeah? Where's this energy coming from? Say again? Where is this energy coming from? Does it start at it, does it start at the base or does it is like where is it coming from? Do you know what I mean? Like for example, when I plug the electricity cord into the into the wall, the electricity comes from the cables into the in, into the plug, right? Where, where is this energy coming from? Like what's the yeah, yeah, I understand. So you you might as well ask what makes us alive, right? <laughs> yeah, well that's it. Yeah. Yeah. So obviously it's consciousness and vital energy from where does that come? You know, so it's also outside of us and it's also inside of us you know but for example when when the brain function disappears you know practically the person is dead because consciousness cannot connect to the brain and there's no wave possibility collapse no experience you know only potentially in the heart for some people you know but usually for uh, most of the people brain is what dictates everything yeah that's why when uh, again brain function disappears you know then you may say that person is dead you know but uh, again, it's it's consciousness and vital energy, which again it makes us alive and makes the whole universe alive. You know, there's uh, uh, in yoga, you know, it's seen that uh, what we have in our body, and there are so many references, you know, in uh, all the traditions that what is in us, it's also outside of us. And then also this game, this language, the mysterious language of synchronicities. You know, so showing that everything that happens to us and with us, it's really, uh, you know, so what is inside of us is reflecting on the outside. Mm. So it's, uh, yeah. And also remember that we are on this planet and then uh, up to speak about uh, that we are the only intelligent beings in the whole universe. It's just a joke. Yeah, that is. What, what, what do you think is going on in someone's head who's got dementia or Alzheimer's, like really intense case, like, I always wondered, I, I look at um, my, uh, one of my in-laws and they're full dementia. They can't recognize family members are just sitting there. But I sometimes feel like, you know, that they're, they're not dead. They're not finished. There is a part of them in there that could possibly perceive, but it's not a mental type of perception. It's a different perception. And I'd like to take your, your, you know, professional background and understand what do you think mm -hmm. is going on in their head? Like if you were to put yourself in their head, like what, what's happening? Like yeah, lack of meaning. They lost the, the meaning of things, you know. That's uh, that's the thing, you know. And oh, yeah, there is a, a new theory of Alzheimer that uh, is gaining traction nowadays. Is that Alzheimer disease is an autoimmune disease, you know? Also, so there's a lot of study on that. But uh, what I see, I mean, also I noticed uh, that Alzheimer now it's at the ages even forty some of age. You know, you see nowadays people with Alzheimer and dementia. You know, and again, I, I would say myself, I would say that that it's a, it's a problem of, um, again, living without a purpose, you know, that's what's happening, you know, you keep repeating uh, tasks which are not important, you know, and then again, you're totally disconnected from, from yourself, you know, so if we continue in this way, you know, check what's happening nowadays with the people who are stuck on the computers, on the phones all the time, jumping on the phone the first thing in the morning and the last thing in the night. And also we are disconnecting from ourselves. And I would say 
check that, you know? Yeah, I like to look at life um, with a certain type of perspective that's really helped me. Uh, is I see everything as a reflection of my reality. So that's including yeah. my, 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 all of my goods around my house, so my car, my laptop, and things like, you know, this morning, my laptop charger wasn't charging. And I looked at it from the physical sense. Yeah, okay, it's not charging. Cool. There could be a logical reason. But then I also went a step above and looked at it from the symbolic sense, where it's like, okay, it's my laptop it's tied to my identity, charging, it's battery. And I looked at where I was in my life and I was like, man, I could really use a break today. I could really rest. I'm not charging. And it was so exactly. weird because I was sitting there, I was trying to plug this thing in, I'm blowing in it, I'm doing all these things, nothing's working. I'm like, you know what? Screw it, let it go. I went, I, yeah. cooked, I cooked a nice salmon sandwich, I sat down, I ate it, I came back, I plugged it in, it started charging. Yeah, 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 I do the same. And immediately, if you check the, the same relation with, my, with your car, for me, the car oh, is in the big one. Exactly where I am, you know, my God. Like it's not even, ah, it's making all these noises. Like if I'm not okay and in line, you know, especially money Pura Chakra, you know, it's just, I noticed that really. Or we are burning all these uh, electric devices. If you notice when it's too much uh, sexual energy and only there, yeah. you're burning electric devices, you know? Yeah, but yeah, yeah so I noticed that all the time. And for me, you know, especially when it's things repeating, you know, then you really have to stop and see what's just connect, go in your, I find yourself going a little bit of in your room and stay there, meditate be with yourself to a little bit of retreat or a fasting for me i just do one day of fasting and things start come in place sometimes i have to do seven days you know and yeah. i'm good with that but it's really coming so it's just it's being passionate about life i think it's like you just check the, the the signs especially when things are repeating you know because it's not we are not disconnected with the things we are there just we don't want to look at the things and messages are everywhere yeah, you're right. It's it's like another language that hasn't really been paid attention to. Like with the car thing, like I, I've noticed that, you know, and, um, there'll be times when my front right wheel will be like, it will show up on my car's infotainment system with like uh, air pressure too low. Then I'll think of it symbolically. What could this possibly mean? And I'm like, okay, right side is my uh, masculine side. Um, where where am I in my life at the moment? So I'll go deep, dig deep, deeper and I'll be like, all right, you know what? I could be a bit more focused in what I'm doing. I could be a bit more organized in what I'm doing. And then the air represents the energy that I'm putting into moving forward. And I'm not putting enough emphasis on my masculine side and being organized, disciplined, and structured. So, so it's almost like that. And it, it's weird how when you are open to the idea, all these deeper answers that can come up from your subconscious. So it's, yeah. it's almost like life and the universe is always trying to communicate to you. It's like telling you yeah. what's going on, you know, but you just have to have the ears, eyes, the scent to just listen. Like what's, what does it want to tell me? And also, especially, I mean, I know I'm I, you also, but uh, uh, especially women, you know, we have access to a lot of intuition and there are a lot of things, even dreams, of course, dreams is fundamental to want to work to understand what your subconscious, you know, what your soul is communicating through symbols or the supramental level is telling us in the dreams. It's so beautiful, you know, yeah. and the thing is that if we uh, disregard all this signs then oh yeah we get less and less communication eventually nothing you know mm -hmm. but if you follow those things you know it's it's amazing mm -hmm. you know and again it's it's also about the material things of course like about the live things it's even more you know and even if you take a look in your body what's happening you have a pain somewhere if you have a pain in the chest area, then you know it's, something is there. You have to work with that. Or as you said, the hand or something. And also all of this, yeah. you know, we can make correlations and we don't even need to know so much. Okay, if you know it's bad, it's good. But if not, just go in your heart as much as you can and the message will come clear, you know? Yeah. And then uh, again, we there is um, the New German Medicine. I don't know if you heard Dr. Hammer who is going even further, like really describing the emotional cause for most of diseases, if not for all of them. Well, yeah, I could definitely agree with that. There's been, you know, especially, again, coming back to the symbolic language, you know, I have uh, been in my past having issues with my knees. I've been to doctors, Western medicine doctors, and I never was able to get a proper fix for it until I went on my own healing journey and my, my research work, and eventually came to realize each knee has a specific uh, connection to the brain, to your psychology, and to an emotion. 
and yeah they're connected to certain energies, whether it's feminine or masculine. And where in my life am I putting so much pressure on myself that now my knees can't even support the, the weight? So when you, yeah. when I realized that, boom, I'm like, okay, obviously, you know, I need to, to, to shift this around and stop taking the burden of people onto myself. And boom. Yeah, too, but also it's the ego, you know, like the knees are related very much with the ego. I think the way we act. Yeah. 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 And just like that knees, body. And I think as, for, for men we're coming into a world now where we're beginning to connect more with our body we, for, for a long time we've been cut off from our body i mean actually like physically we've been cut off Can you ima imagine this for a second a brand new child comes onto the planet and the first greeting it gets is its penis chopped off circumcision and here you go and i like that's like instant disconnection to the body right so and the same is the girls, you know, and I, oh my God, I cannot even think of this atrocities that are done. Yes. It's wild though. Can you just imagine like you just come freshly onto this earth. You're like, wow, beautiful. I'm here to explore. I'm here to, to, to love this world and boom, chopped off. Like what an introduction yeah. to the planet. What a, yeah. what a wild introduction. Yeah, but, but still, you know, at least those people, they still live in tribes, you know. So nowadays the problem is that we lost the community living, really. We are living more and more isolated. And now with this crisis, now that we are told to stay in the house, to wear the mask all the time, that's another story, you know, which yeah. again is going in the same direction. So, yeah, the idea is to, again, bring back, like if you if you check the Dr. Gabor Mate's work, he's coming with the, even explaining the theory of autism, based on this uh, that we lost the community living you know mm -hmm. so eventually we need to i mean how what what can what you think that we can just communicate online not really it's so different you know yeah right and to i mean if you speak of non-locality yeah we can access easily non-locality through the heart but first you need to correlate with the person physically you know mm -hmm. So that's why it's all this theory of germs uh, there. You know, nowadays you have to just wash your hands and all that and stay in here. You will pick that, pick that. In the past, come on, there were so many things. And uh, again, the relation between the uh, really immunity and the capacity, capacity to love. I see that that would be something if we okay. again pay attention to that. All right. So that brings us to question two. <laughs> <laughs> so. <laughs> you're about to leave this planet okay and you're gone forever after this you can give humanity you can leave humanity with one bit of advice what advice do you give the human species yeah what advice to give obviously to to love you know love would be the number one is the fundamental energy of god and to be have the courage to love and obviously that starts with uh, loving yourself, not from something else. And there's a lot of wisdom there in the heart. And uh, then also the other things have to be awakened, but without love, I don't know, we, we are not uh, human. So being human starts with developing the heart. So it's even the symbol of the cross, you know, it's at the level of the heart. So what is under is more like survival instinct if you want you know and that's okay but when you develop the heart then you cannot hurt others and also yourself so that would be thank you yeah. your, your uber is here now to take you to heaven <laughs> <laughs> let's go <laughs> but still there's so much more to do <laughs> in it um, all right let's go to question number three uh, so this is one of my favorite questions and I'd like to get your take on it. So, you know, when we're manifesting, we, we have an image of what we want to create. For example, we want to create a house, a relationship, a bank balance, and that image has to come out from the mind and into the world. What would be the one most powerful, most potent tool or secret that you could tell people that they can access to create that vision from their mind and into the world? Okay. So, um, first of all, I mean, the science of manifestation. Yeah, you saw the movie The Secret, and hopefully you'll make some better version because The Secret doesn't give the secret. Yeah. And uh, 
yeah the idea is not so much about uh, getting and creating something external before you practice a sense of manifestation on internal things you know and there's so much to work on you know because again as you said the more we develop our development will manifest in the world in the same way but we need to, we what we can work on it's ourselves you know and another thing is that what we want to create needs to be this is very important in line with the movement of consciousness you know so the more you do that then it's kind of your your life needs to be in uh, in synchrony in coherence yeah so then it's not like for example when you love you don't need to stop loving in order to do something else you take that love in that action and it's a it's a coherent movement there you know also when you want to create something that something needs to be in line with the movement of consciousness at that lens also being in line with your dharma yeah so it's something which makes you grow of that this is very important you know and then the same important to understand is how to work with the intent that's the first thing that we need to understand you know so in, indeed if you have a very powerful very honest very clear intent and you are able to keep it, to persevere with that, you know, and that intent is in line with the move to consciousness, you know, being the first thing in manifestation, the intent, then the chances are maybe 70% done when you're really able to manifest that intent. Now what's happening is that we say that we want this, this after two seconds, we want that, after two seconds, we want that, and after five seconds, we want, you see, you know? So again, when it's really something that, troubles you you know and you're really really know that that's what you want with all your heart you know you want you desire and you're ready for that you know then it's again it's 70 percent of the action is done you know but uh again so intent intent needs to be pure and in this way and then what is not enough you need to do this intent in a state when you are inspired what means that you're inspired you know for example a sunset can can something that takes you out of your ego that is expanding your consciousness you know can be uh, again for you wake up in the morning and you have your own practice and you just again you connect with yourself and especially with your heart so something needs to warm your heart when you think of that intent you just don't do it cold only with the mind you need to put something to inspire you it can come you go to doctor you go to a teacher for this for inspiration so you have to put inspiration together, you know, the energies of inspiration that expands you together with an intent, which needs to be very, very clear. So that's really from a clear brain. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then play the game. You know, there's a game. It's a dooby doo game. So you're doing and you're getting a feedback. You're being you have to, again, be the most focused you can and then also the most relaxed you can. You know, so it's a it's a really a, a game between awareness and relaxation. They really come together in a creative process. You need to have some practice for that. Or if not, again, just be really connect with the wisdom of nature, with your inner wisdom, and then see, listen to the intuitions that will come, eventually the insights. It may take time. It may be less or longer time according to your own process, you know? So that's a brief uh, I love introduction. It. I love it. It said dooby doo. That's such an important recipe for manifestation because it's because if you're not relaxed you cannot hear nothing you know so and also in uh, in healing quantum healing if you're not able to relax which is so much underrated relaxation you know uh you know so how can you get any how can you hear that it's just coming and going you know you don't even hear that insight yeah so what i don't understand is you know nazi germany hitler the decimation of you know millions of, of Jew jewish people was hitler in line with the actions of consciousness at that point like did consciousness, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, like, it, yeah, maybe when you see it from a really, really expanded perspective and we take away judgment, it's just, an, you know, consciousness exploring it, its darkest fantasies. But I, I would like to see your take on that. Obviously not, not in, you mean why, how, how come that he, he had, uh, he was able to destroy so much? That's the question. I mean, he was able to amass weapons. He was able to, to, to yeah. amass massive armies. Like, you know, I can't even go get my mail. And this man, you know, like <laughs> this guy's created this. He had power. He had power, yeah. So, so, so there, there's a power there. But maybe then you, again, we go to the question uh, a bit, you know, this dichotomy between good and evil. 
you know so sure. there's both you know there's both and uh, until i mean until a point there's a dichotomy and this force is there and as i mentioned for example the ego and the power can be something that again it's uh, you know you get in a station when you have uh, you're using wrong these energies but you still have them you have access to this and i don't know what he was in another life but obviously he had access to a power you know and not you know he didn't use it well what can i say and then he created all these disaster now i don't know what's happening with him what happened to him after that and all that but i don't expect something very pleasant or good you know because again when you have access to a great power and you use it so bad you know then consequences are there you know, huge consequences. So even even for spiritual, like, even for spiritual people, you know, if you are manipulating others, you know, even that has huge consequences afterwards. You know, so it's kind of you have access to all kind of gifts, but if you are uh, misusing or even hurting others, there's tons of consequences. You now, is it is it really consequences or is it just learning? Do you know what I mean? Consequences is more like you're going to get punished, or oh. darkness, or is it more just like? Oh. All right, you did this. But there are things that you see, the consequences, you know, and then eventually, yeah, you learn, but you learn if you want to learn, you know, see, the universe has so much time. You know, you're doing it from a place of suffering and pain, and that's the possibility. You can continue to create that, or you can move towards the light where you're going to find more joy, peace, and nirvana. Is the actual consequences that's something that exists, or is that a state of mind? I, I know. I, I would believe that everybody from no matter where you are you know there's a there's a place when you can decide for growth you know mm -hmm. and again it's not that you're punished in this way now life is not punishing us in this way you know so we have to but we have to learn you know and there are consequences so for example even if you're mistreating your body you know you're eating only sugar yeah. there is a consequence that you will get diabetes yeah, you yeah. know and oh. then there's a lesson when you want to heal from that and especially, by the way, Manipura Chakra, again, which also the some self-control and discipline comes in place, Manipura Chakra, yeah? speaking of uh, sugar also. <laughs> so consequences, but also lessons, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, well, if you could ask Hitler one thing, what would it be? If I could ask him something. Yeah, you're sitting down in a room. He's, he's sitting on the chair there, okay? And you can sit with him, you can have a conversation with him, he will tell you everything, and he can't lie, okay? And you can ask him anything. What would you ask him? In the, in the situation, as he was, or as he may be now? No, no, just, it, it's just him. It, it, it's him as a being, him in all of his future lives and his past lives, everything. Whatever mm -hmm. you want, you'll get it. What would you say? <laughs> Oh my, I don't know. I don't think he would even listen to anything. <laughs> Hold on, he's going, don't worry, I'm there with a the cane. Um, I'm going to make sure he does. He would just be in front of me, looking at me, and see what I'm doing with my own power, because I'm, I'm here to empower others, and he's just empowering himself, right? <laughs> yeah. Maybe I would remind him to empower others. I don't know. Others, good ones, but I don't know. It's difficult, difficult question, my dear. Well, he did empower all the people in his army. But that's what I'm saying, you know, so empower the, the good, but how to, I don't know, there's no way, you know, the people I'm telling you, so even as a doctor, you know, or as a teacher, so people need to, uh, they need to want, you know, it's not, you cannot pull the grass to grow, you cannot help transform now, you cannot help heal nobody, you know, only if they want, you know. Yeah, they no they really come and ask, you know, and then there are things, yes. And then again, you can give inspiration. Would he get, get something from me, you know, be inspired? I don't know. So it's again, yeah. it's up to everybody there. Yeah. I mean, there were horrific act, acts and it'd be interesting to have a chat with them and see what. Yeah. What but there are, there are the people who did all kinds of things, even nowadays, you know. Yeah. So you wouldn't have anything you want to ask him? No. No? Mm -mm. In that what? <laughs> no, I don't, I don't think so. What his diet was like. You know what I mean? Like, what, did he eat blueberries for breakfast? No, I would not ask him anything. You know, if he wants to ask me something, okay. If not, what to say? <laughs> okay, cool. Well, that brings us to our last question. And this is a very exciting one. Something that I've been waiting all day for. And this is about non-local and quantum healing. What is it? How does it work? And 
let's get deep with what are the possibilities of quantum healing? And you can talk about things of, you know, I don't know if it has anything to do with parallel realities, other dimensions, uh, you know, um, quantum entanglement. I'm just going to throw, throw it to you. Okay. So uh, again, when you say quantum healing, uh, first of all, it comes from that level, which is called the supramental level, you know, and then for uh, healing, we need to recognize the healing power of consciousness, you know, it's called downward causation, which has a freedom to choose, you know, and the fact that consciousness actually has the requisite wisdom, you know, which is in the supramental compartment. Yeah, So we know that we, we have five bodies of consciousness, not just the physical body. If you think that we are just a physical body, there's nothing to talk about, like with Hitler. Yeah. yeah. So the consciousness has the, the that wisdom, and also it has the mechanism, you know, to choose a new context, you know, for, for the mental processing of emotions, you know, and it also has the power to discover what is needed to make a quantum leap of insight. You know, when you get a brilliant idea and and also power to manifest, you know, and again. When it manifests the insight, when you know, it's it's gonna unblock a vital feeling at the level of a chakra which is affected in any kind of situation. There's a blockage in various places, and then will unblock a movement uh, of um, we call them vital blueprints, you know, which are associated with these uh, blockages and chakras, you know, and will also revive a correlated physical organ with the proper organ function, you know. So if you think of quantum healing, obviously you think of an organ problem also, yeah? So for example, uh, there are cases of spontaneous healing of cancer, you know, various types with various causes, which may be due to the sudden onset of such a dynamic surge in the immune system activity, for example, that the cancerous growth can be destroyed in days, sometimes even in hours. There are many cases of that, you know, even, uh, yeah, Joe Dispenza, it comes to my mind, you know, he Maybe had instant. already. Hmm? Maybe instant, like instant, just. Yeah, exactly. So there are people with, even Amit, Amit was telling me one instant, I don't know an instant case of my own patients, but Amit told me that there was this woman and uh, she, he was there with her also in, in a workshop led by, I don't even know who in America. And uh, he was guiding them to dance. And initially she she didn't want, oh, how can you dance? You know, like you're in the ego, you don't want to dance. You just want to be serious and uh, suffering when you're in the ego, right? Why would you get up and dance and forget about this, you know? But eventually she got up and uh, she went really in a state of trance. And uh, there was a special music and he was also guiding this in a way, you know, that professor. And suddenly she went in the state of trance and she was crying and crying and crying and suddenly she melted. She, she felt that those tears were melting a block of ice, which then afterwards she just went to doctor a few days ago and that, that uh, tube cancer was gone, you know? So he knew such a case. I, I know people and I also guided some people, but it took time, you know, it was nothing like sudden like that, you know? So uh, again, the we speak about self-healing and we all have this capacity and we need to apply it, especially nowadays, you know? Uh, but uh, we need to also uh, have a more detached and even lucid way to see disease, you know? And uh, also cultivate to be firm, optimistic, you know? Mm -hmm. To see, uh, as we spoke about, uh, the disease as a consequence of not such a good resonance, you know? Something that you kept for years, for years, you know? Or a very intense, uh, I don't know, a feeling of uh, trauma or uh, hate or anything which was intense enough to cause. It was a resonance there, you know, or a lack of resonance. Okay. So the first thing is to kind of be open to see what from what you did or what you maintain in the emotions, in the mental areas, created that, you know, and then you become responsible, you know. And uh, yeah, yeah, you wanted to ask something, sorry. I said, did someone just rip a skid outside? Say again? Did someone rip a skid. Okay, I don't I, I don't hear you. Sorry. Do a burnout? Did someone screech their tires? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay, cool. Okay. No, no, I just thought I was um I don't know if video <laughs> in the back of my YouTube. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So how, All right. how does this happen on a distance? Like how how, for example, for someone for clients who are looking to work with you mm -hmm. and 
they're in Australia or they're in China. Can you do mm -hmm. the work from distance? Yeah, you, you can do, but again, it's up to where the person is, you know, because again, you have to create a tangle hierarchical relation, you know, the, the better the relation, the better, you know, and again, you not just me, so whoever is a doctor or a health practitioner, you know, the idea is that you need to have worked with yourself, you know, so the better the chances, the better that you worked with yourself a lot, you know, and then it's so interesting, like for me, when, when I told you when I had Lyme disease, you know, st I started to get patients from so many people coming with this thing, you know, so the more I was working with them, I was realizing things. So, so kind of as a doctor, you're also healing yourself with the patients, you know, it's so interesting. And, and then, uh, yeah, so then it's really like when you do this, uh, you know, when, when this is your path, you know, the path of wholeness, then you, uh, you don't even feel that you're working, you know, because again, whatever comes to you, it comes also in a way to, to help you be even more integrated and more healthy. And then, of course, it's easy to work with people because you can see the truth, even if they say something else, kind of, you know, <laughs> they come in your, uh, you know, in your workplace and they say something and you can go to the truth there according to how much you establish this relation with the truth yourself, you know. And then again, so you, you need to create this um, tangle hierarchy relation when it's not, it's not a linear relationship it's a tangled so kind of again both are creating each other you know it's a creativity process there in place and that other person uh, it needs to be in a, in a place that's really i mean you, you really want to to learn and transform and to grow and make something beautiful out of that you know yeah. and then obviously to 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 have the courage and the perseverance you know which again is something that we are not uh, learned so much to do the required um, changes and have the practices and also have a journal i don't work with anybody who doesn't have a journal it's very important to have a journal to see really what is happening there in the background you know because it's what we see at the surface is just the tip of the iceberg right so it's a it's a long situation and you need to not want a quick fix you know so there are things okay so you can give some quick fixes if it's nothing uh, really you know but uh, again, take, uh, take any kind of crisis and uh, disease or sufferance as an opportunity to really transform, you know, because there are all these compartments that have been, uh, uh, you know, you, you didn't care about them that may call you at some point and they, they may be the source of your uh, reconnection, for example. Mm. Valentina, I feel like I could talk to you for, for hours. Uh, Me too. <laughs> A lot of insight and wisdom and we haven't even gotten to talk about the pyramids and dna and all the other work over there and i think extraterrestrials don't forget <laughs> the extraterrestrials don't forget sorry what well, sorry i can't hear. what was that the extraterrestrials oh yes the extraterrestrials remember when when i asked you what you want to talk about you mentioned that also and that was wow <laughs> well you know i mean we can we can do one more question sure let's do it okay your interaction with extraterrestrials all right one second. Uh, now if you want there's i have two recordings to it's in english and portuguese it's a more uh, expanded you know it's uh, i can send you a, a website link you know for that if you want one but just briefly i gotta go to toilet. Hmm? i gotta go to the bathroom real quick Okay. okay. Oh, okay. I'm waiting. No, I'm still, I'm still on it. Okay. Okay, back. All right, so I'll start the question again. Just so okay. Okay, cool. So question five. 
this is a special question. The connection of DNA, ancient Egypt, the beings in ancient Egypt, the pyramids and extraterrestrials. Is there a connection through all of those? Yeah. How can it not be? I would say, you know, so that's if you want one place, how can it not be? <laughs> mm. Because there was so much wisdom that uh, was lost nowadays. So you hardly find somebody who really uh, is in touch, you know, and in open, to expanded consciousness to have the intuitions and the connections of uh, what was in the ancient Egypt, you know. And again, I, I was there and I connected uh, instantly with, uh, with, I don't know, it was so interesting as I was walking on the streets of, of uh, Egypt in various places, not just Cairo. And uh, it was so rich, such a rich experience of reconnection and uh, as if a whole universe was opening inside of me. And it was, uh, it was really like, a, it's such a, such a huge state of flow and communi communion with the whole universe there and wisdom and humbleness and such a peace that I experienced there. And the same time as I was looking at the people who just were not in touch anymore with all that, it was interesting to see that. And um, so I had, I had uh, experience, my experiences with extraterrestrials, yes. And you ask about DNA, I had even had the experience. You had the experience in, in Egypt with the extraterrestrials? Not particularly with that, but in Egypt, I had the experience with uh, of connection with the uh, with the past, you know, and what was there, and I could feel what was it uh, an intense presence. For example, I was for example, yeah, just one. I was at the temple of Hatshepsut, Hatshepsut. you know, Hatshepsut. and uh, it was a lot of ruins there, and I'm really like I just I you whenever I'm going, you know, you, I'm not even studying before, you know, I'm just letting. Uh, letting the wind take me there, you know, and when I'm going somewhere, it's always intense, you know, and passionate, and I'm, I'm learning, and I'm discovering, and otherwise in dreams, so I'm sleeping in a place, and in dreams, I'm getting all kind of uh, great, great revelations, you know, and even connections with the past, you know, so I had in, uh, in India, actually, it was something very amazing at a certain temple, like when really after some days, after visiting a place, I was visited in the astral by, uh, by, by probably there were Dakinis, you know, Dakinis and, uh, and Dakini. there, which was very, uh, if you want the archetypal uh, uh, manifestations of feminine manifestations of uh, feminine forces, it's, it's, okay, so let me go back to Hatshepsut. So I was in front of that temple and again, it was a lot of just ruins there, you know, and I couldn't move from there. I could really, I, I didn't move. So I was just standing there and crying and crying. And I felt how it was touching my heart so deeply. And uh, I didn't ask myself, like, just with a curious mind, uh, like, why is that? Because I knew it would come from inside, you know? And then then it came in a, in a dream, the, the image of me as a priest and as a man priest in that temple. You know, when I was just doing uh, the preparation of the bodies and all that. So that was such a uh, really, really powerful experience. And, uh, and then, yeah, for my birthday, I was meditating in the pyramid. And it really felt like as if I was the whole universe. It was so easy, expanded. So now I didn't, again, I'm not, I didn't ask myself what caused that. If I entered in communion with something else, with some other beings, you know, it was just that I was the whole universe. So it's so beautiful. And when you have this kind of expansions, it comes also with the state of simplicity, which is amazing. You know, just being simple is huge, you know? It's truly huge, you know? So when you have this kind of states, which are, you have the whole, uh, you feel like you have the whole power of the universe. At the same time, you are like a grain of sand, you know? So it's such a beautiful, beautiful, like the most beautiful states I have in this way. Okay, and then, um, Later on, I had a conscious experience with extraterrestrials. You know, if you heard about Dr. Stephen Greer and CISETI, the Center for the Study of Extraterrestrial Intelligence. So um, first experience 
it was even before uh, learning about him, I was in, uh, in Nevada in USA, walking in the desert because I have a connection with nature and I like deserts, you know, a lot. And I was just walking and suddenly I had this moment of expansion. Like I really, it felt as if I was projected outside of earth, you know, outside of earth in the space. And I entered in a, such a deep meditation, which was in, in physical time, it was just a few minutes. But in that place where I went, it felt, I don't know, it felt like 100 years or something. It was so interesting how it felt so expanded, everything. And there, like I was really feeling my concept projected outside of it. And again, I, I didn't expect nothing. I didn't intend nothing. I was just really walking in the desert. And I was, yeah, I went in the state of trance in this way but not on purpose if you want you know so i was just definitely there was something in that place in that moment for me and it was such an overwhelming state of love towards earth you know i could really see the blue planet you know like a blue planet and i could feel like as if this was very important for the whole universe you know and i could feel the love of other beings you know and the care the the way they were looking at earth you know and it was so beautiful like as if it was i don't know maybe a heart of the universe or something i don't know and at the same time i could feel also the opposite some other forces there you know and the tests which exist for everybody you know what other forces hmm? what other forces were these i don't know so i'm just telling you so i i felt first of all it was huge and it was how to say, incomparably much, much greater, the power of the good and the love that was there, it was much, much greater than also I perceived again, I perceived also something also like some other forces which were attacking earth, if you want, in a negative way, you know, so I could feel that too. But it didn't matter because that other love, you know, which was there was much, much, much greater, it was so, so beautiful. And then, and then, I mean, I was really like, I was overwhelmed, you know, and then I, it came so clearly the intuition that whatever we need to do, we just need to connect with the wisdom of earth. You know, so when I came back, it was a state of gratitude so huge that I just really put my down and I was kissing the earth and embracing it like a wise being. It was so amazing. Okay, and after that, after I don't know, maybe one year or something, uh, I had the, I have uh, still a friend, one of my best friends. She's uh, in Vegas, you know, and she was coming from this retreat from with Dr. Stephen Greer, and we are very much connected. So again, if you want to go into um, extraterrestrial contact, human initiated, which is totally possible, you need to. The first condition is to really be able to 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 have a team consciousness, you know, to practice this non-locality at least with one person. When when there's already two people, that's already a group, you know. But even that nowadays you don't find so much people that you really match, you know. So if if in a group, for example, you have a group of people you, know, you want to initiate this kind of contact you need to have really the same intent and it has to come from the heart, from a pure heart, you know, not just from a curious journalistic attitude, you know, and uh, because it's enough one person and then uh, it's, it's compromising the experience of the whole group in the physical level because inside you can have your experiences, but if you want also outer manifestations, which we had, then it needs to be this state of non-locality in place, you know. So she, she just came from this retreat and uh, she taught me it's a very simple method, which I was, again, I was practicing even since I was a child, you know, this method of expansion of consciousness out. So out, for example, you lay down in the evening. This is what I was doing without knowing. And then you expand as if your consciousness is really going above, above uh, the room, above your city, above your planet, out in the outer space. And there you introduce yourself you know, and with love, with fraternity, you invite them to manifest for you, you know, in the most appropriate and safe way for both you and them, you know, so that was all. But the idea is, again, to start from that place of consciousness. So you have to have this uh, team uh, heart there, you know, so and you're no local with the person, because what I understand is that they, that's how they function, you know, so it's not a, a individualist consciousness, you know, so it's a group consciousness there. Which again, if, if the humanity is not there, you, we humanity, we are still dominated by uh, uh, 
Manipura chakra, you know? So we want to put weapons in the space. Imagine, you know, what is the human doing nowadays? It's a lot of manipulation. So that's level of Manipura chakra there. So it's not so much love and fraternity. So frater that kind of fraternity, and then you can really expand. And the world manifestation was so interesting. And so, I mean, the first sign when, uh, when uh, it's so, so beautiful, it was that feeling of uh, home that I, again, I really never felt. So it was putting a smile on my face and in my body, you know, it was such a state of love and uh, obviously being totally safe, but a state of home that I never felt, you know, and my, for my friend also. And at the same time, we had a cat in the room and the cat was really jumping on the walls, you know, and it was making so crazy sounds. And we knew that the cat, maybe she's seeing something. We were only feeling something, you know, but the cat obviously also, you know, and we put the cat out and still the cat was bumping on the door, you know. Yes. And then eventually the next days we did this method outside because that's the idea to do it, especially when it's night outside and you just look at the stars and you do the method. So it's, it's beautiful and we were doing it often if the cat also was calming down and got used with this new energy and new presence that was there so and then yeah i, I had many experiences and even of deep deep healing for me you know so but again you cannot force this as you cannot force nothing that is supramental but also this you you I, there's no way to force this but there, there's methods yeah yeah sounds like you were mushrooms yeah, you see, so it's so stopped. <laughs> then you had interaction with these beings. What was like the interaction like? Were they humanoid? Were they insects? Were they... Okay, so I'll tell you one, because again, I was not really looking. Again, I'm, I'm my style, how am I done? You know, how I am functioning is I'm not really uh, asking, you know, with the mind. I'm kind of... Are opening from the heart you know and then it's like a child if you want that's how i practice this method you know and then whatever is revealed is revealed you know but it was once when i mean there were all kind of various manifestations physical manifestations also inner manifestations amazing ones you know but if you want me to talk about shape and form i can tell you one you know which was very very special to me so um very really special so it was uh, again, I was in the desert, you know, and with this friend of mine and there were other people in the house. We had a, a retreat there in that period. And uh, we, uh, we, we, there were more, many people in the house and then we had to sleep in the same bed, okay? Because usually I'm, I'm super sensitive to noise and she's also, you know, so we had to, okay, just sleep in the same. All right, so we did this method in the evening, just really expanding out and calling them all right, and then we went to sleep. So it was just uh, an intent there. And she went through such a deep sleep as if you could cut wood on her. So true, like she was totally, totally asleep. And me, I was, I started to burn, you know? So the physical body was heating up, huge, 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 huge. So it was, I was so hot, it could fry an egg on me, you know? And in the same time, it was a state of happiness, which was increasing. And it's like, you cannot contain this much happiness in, in the physical body kind of, I felt that. So it was like, as if it was breaking you apart, but such a state of happiness was in me, you know, coming from this state of expansion, which I think it was the most intense state of happiness that I felt. And I was, I was also in that time, you see, even now I have amethyst. So I had a crystal and uh, I used to sleep with the crystal in my hand for many, many, many years. And even in that time, I was sleeping with my crystal in my hand, you know, and that crystal was again, was super, super, super hot, you know. So the more I was getting hot, that was even hotter. I was holding that, you know, I was again, and I was sweating. So I was just moving, jumping around almost, you know, in the bed, but still with the eyes closed and yeah, in this state. And um and then uh, what happened was, uh, I mean, it, it, from the beginning, you know, so I could see uh, the, uh, the, with the eyes closed, but I saw, you know, so without, without wanting, without looking, it was uh, five or six uh, very tall men, you know, so it was, it was like a man, it was a little bit, uh, I mean, they were tall, and the head was, okay, no hair, and it was a little bit more uh, elongated, you know, the, the crane, and they were there, just simply at the, at the, bad edge and they were really all working on me and the intuition was so clear that they were really really acting on my dna 
you know it was so clear and indeed so I was in a period when I was like my heart was really I was in that state I told you of dark night of the soul I was really suffering and it was wonderful so I was just open and very very happy and then eventually after I don't know it was like maybe five hours experience and then I let the crystal down because, and even mentally I said okay that's enough because the next day I had to be up and running all kind of events you know and uh, and that's it so in that moment yeah they disappeared and I slept you know so that was one when I saw yeah when you when you say they were working on your DNA what does that mean with a that was the intuition. That was the intuition because really I could feel, I don't know how to explain, like how deep in my in my bodies I could feel what they, they were doing. I don't know exactly. I, I there, There's no way I can explain how, but it was extremely, extremely deep and extremely, extremely good, you know, what was happening. And it was like the intuition was that, you know, it just came as a yeah. very clear yeah. intuition, you know. Beings? Like, do you know where the beings were from? No, not ah. Okay, so I got later. I got later about, uh, yeah, but that's more, it's also about uh, my roots, kind of. I don't want to say that. <laughs> I respect that. Yeah, very interesting. Um, very interesting to see this part of, of um, perception opening up to, to the yeah. higher realities and these other extraterrestrials. Did, did you happen to have any insight into like how are they helping us like how how are they helping us transform and evolve and there's a lot of darkness on the planet a lot of things that are going on how are they yeah i mean i mean now i mean i don't know how you know about some of these things and many people know but uh um we i think that we are very much manipulated to stay away from contacting them you know because it's all these uh, movies and all these scenarios and even all kind of things which can be done to seem like that you know but it's not like that so you know so it's a lot to see what is our inner demons you know and what is the uh, actions that are attributed to extraterrestrials you know because kind of i feel like we of course humanity is kept I mean, there are so many files, you know, it's, if you check even online, Dr. Stephen Greer's work, you know, with the, uh, with testimonials from militaries, you know, and so many, like how many really experiences are, and even uh, documented a lot, like the objects which are seen physically, you know, and especially in the areas where, uh, again, militaries, they want to launch weapons in the space. So that's interesting, you know, because we are not allowed to do that. There's not a way we are not here to conquer the space. So if we want as a planet to, to be in this uh, family, the intergalactic family, we need to grow up, you know? So we we are like kids which have strong weapons, you know, and we are not at the level of the weapons that we have, you know? Yeah. And also we are not using our capacity. So I feel that they are here and they are accessible and help us grow and heal, but also they show that many of the actions that are done at the highest levels are not okay. Mm. Okay, so what's one really simple practice or strategy that you could give to the viewers tonight for being able to, to connect to their heart and to be able to connect to this extra sensory perception of other realities around them and beings and information in the most safest way possible? Yeah. So uh, first of all, the easiest way, which again, minds don't like easy things, you know, but we should start with that is mental hygiene, you know? So you can, for example, keep your eyes closed and take a deep breath and relax your shoulders, your belly, and move your attention to your breathing. Simply witness your breathing for a few moments. You can do this morning and evening also, you know, to start the day in this way and also end the day in this way. Because the breathing and the physical body, it's about the moment of now, you know, the present moment. Mm. And then eventually, so after you did this for at least five minutes, then also you move your attention into your heart in the middle of your chest, where is the projection of the heart, the heart chakra. Mm. And in the same time, you maintain your attention on the breathing. So you maintain your attention in two points in your heart and on your breathing 
and then just allow yourself to have this time, you know, to connect with yourself and then see what's happening because this is really a technique which seems simple, but it's from a treatise which is called Vijnana Bhairava Tantra. And those treaties, when you have the keys, they are uh, keys for opening what is called the supramental level of our being, you know? And the heart is a gate towards that, you know? So, and then, for example, if you want to connect with, so again, take, take your time to do this practice, morning and evening, at least five minutes. And then uh, in the evening, for example, or in the morning or both, if you're open to high, to this, uh, other beings, you know, then you can um, simply, uh, when you're in, let's say you can do this even laying down in the bed, you know, and then as being relaxed, as you are there, you simply allow yourself to expand. And again, as I described you the exercise, so you, as if your consciousness is containing the whole room, you know, and then the whole town where you are, and then the whole country, and then continue to expand even outside of the limits of the planet. So it, it helps if you, if, you, if you travel by plane, most of us did, and you see how you're rising up, of, you know? There is even movies, you know, you can check uh, this zoom out and zoom in movies, you know, to help you visualize. And then out of the planet, then in the, in, uh, out of our solar system, you have to know that we are the third planet from the sun, out of the seven systems, and then out of the solar system, in the intergalactic space, out of, out, out of the galactic, uh, you know, our, our galaxy, in the intergalactic space, and there you simply, with a pure heart, you, you emanate your intent, your wish, your invite, and you present yourself, you know, you not with so many words, but just, you know, as an idea. And you invite the extraterrestrial beings uh, to manifest in your dream or in your light, life, you know, it's simply inviting the same way, actually, you can work with the angels, you know, that's another story with working with the angels, because mm -hmm. they really wait for us to invite. They are also archetypes, you know, if you want, and they help us in the direction of our dharma. So it's good to know that we have, you are not alone. That's the message. We really are not alone and we have never been alone. So no matter how alone you may feel that you are, that's not the reality. It's a reality of the ego only. So you have, even if you don't have friends, maybe here and there, maybe you can make some, you know, but if not, you can even make friends with these other beings, you know, and again, your guardian angel, first of all. And then again, you invite, the, you go back in the same way as you went up, you go down and then do this three times maybe, and then go to sleep, you know, but even that, so it's, there are all kinds of rules, rules, so given so-called rules, uh, recommendations to prepare yourself for sleep. And then uh, later we can speak about the lucid dreams and, and so on. Yeah, wow, so. that's, that's amazing. I'm gonna, I'm gonna um, try that out tonight, try to go explore, yeah. go do some things, go down to Jupiter for a little bit, chill over there, find a McDonald's. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, Dr. Valentina, where can people find you? Where can people connect with you? Uh, Meetkoswami.org. Yep. And uh, you can go, easier find me on my Instagram. Valentina underline only short. Yep. And that's, I have a lot of uh, things posted there. Okay, cool. Already some methods in uh, English or English and Portuguese. Yeah, all right, awesome, awesome. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show and it was absolutely excellent. Uh, you got a lot of, yeah. of insight and um, I mean, you know, we could just go on for, for hours and hours and- I know, it's the beginning. Thank you, I'm so happy to meet you. Oh, all the best, thank you very much.